The title of today is about Chinese companies going global. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of research about this topic since yeah, people just focus more on um, yeah, uh, how China attracted a foreign, uh, a foreign, yeah, foreign investment. So now um, let's focus on the top, yeah, on this today, yes. <laughs> Okay. Now let's do some. Now let's uh, review something from a historical perspective. Yeah, look, timeline. China started uh, economic reform in 1978. Yeah, at that time, and the open door. Yeah. So since then, open door policy has become national policy, and the goal of that time is just attract foreign direct investment and start uh, trading. Yeah, start trading with the outside world. You know, for that purpose, special economic zones are established uh, in Guangdong. And and um, Fujian, both provinces are close to um, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and uh, yeah, and the government uh, just um, give a lot of uh, favorable conditions to track foreign direct investment, and these investments uh, basically uh, just contributed to the export-oriented manufacturing sectors. So export-oriented is the goal at that time. And also for the private companies of foreign as well as Chinese companies, China, the government just gave a lot of favorable conditions to those, to those companies that export their goods to the outside world. For example, the so tax returns, so those things. So uh, export, uh, export Transportation is the key words for the Chinese company, at uh, Chinese economy at that time. <coughs> now here, and up to the mid '90s, uh, China actually uh, was um, a buyer's market. That's to say, uh, there's shorter supply than de uh, than demand. Um, <coughs> So, so, for example, I, I, I think, yeah, perhaps you know that already. Yeah, around the 90s, people still need retail coupons to buy some life necessities, including cooking oil and flowers even. And, but up to 1990s, uh, 1996, yeah, due to the, yeah, um, um, perhaps Deng Xiaoping's policy, yeah, Deng Xiaoping's sudden tour, then China becomes a um, yeah, buyer's market instead of seller's market. So that's to say, your know, racial coupon periods come to the end, it came to the end, and supply succeeded demand. Um, yeah. So now here, uh, uh, during that time, I think between 90, no, the second half of the 90s, in China, I think the the basic uh, macro environment for the commercial and business environment become uh, relatively stable. So a large number of international giants came to China, including IKEA and Walmart, Starbucks. All these yeah, international, international giants, uh, giants came to, during that time. Uh, foreign companies who have already operated in China and had to change their, change their operational strategies in order to the, the change of the Chinese market. Market. And also, now, now this is also true to the Chinese local companies, private, state-owned, and foreign companies. They have to comp not because at that time they had to compete with foreign rivals in the domestic market. And now, also during this time, a number of mid, medium-sized, yeah, medium and large companies establish a production base in the emerging markets in the yeah, Asia. Yeah, in these markets, not in the uh, well-developed markets. But now something came in 1999, higher setup factory in America. So people just regard it as a, as a signal that Chinese companies really become international players on the, in, yeah, on the domestic market. So in the year 2000, the, the government just add a certain element to the original open door policy. That is not only invite foreign, foreign investment in, but also encourage um, Chinese companies to go out. And now, so the, the favorable conditions are given to those the best companies that can go and invest in your foreign, in your foreign, oh, your foreign markets. I'm sorry. And the, the government hopes that 
and a certain number of Chinese companies can become China's multinational companies. And so now this policy was officially written in the five-year plan between 2001 and 2005. And then the, the goal actually is just advanced yeah, technology, global, you quite global brands, yeah, learn how to manage, and uh, how to do the management and human resources. Actually, the, the, the ultimate goal is just to sustain the development of uh, the economic development of China. That's just for long, in the long term. <laughs> okay, this is another uh, significant year. 2001, China became WTO, the World Trade Organization member. Now, under this, yeah, under this membership, China has to uh, comply to uh, comply by at least these two uh, these two terms. One is called mo most favorable na most favored nation. Now, it means that and. Um, if China gives some favorable conditions to other countries, to just one country, all the members in the WTO had, yeah, can enjoy, can have that favorable conditions. So this is most favored nation. So all the WTO members should be the favored, favored partnership of China. So China is actually was one four hundred, or one, it's number 143. Yeah, so I, that's to say, yeah, um, you yeah, they have to give the most favorable uh, uh, favorable nation treatment to yeah more than half of the country in the world. Another one is national treatment. National treatment means if foreign company foreign yeah, products came to China, they should be regarded as a domestic products. Yes, so they should be considered as uh, something of their own. So so with this. And China has to reduce substantially import tariff and non-tariff barriers. Actually, before the government just used this to protect their own companies, to protect to protect against a large number of exportation. But here, after this, China has to lift that barriers gradually from time to time within five years. So here, there's a there's a case here. Now, before and U.S. agricultural uh, products. Uh, Actually, it's almost nine in China. But after this, now he has about 14 billion yeah, dollars equivalent uh, agricultural uh, goods from the United States and um, yeah, imported to China. So in that kind of situation, how China co Chinese companies should do? Now, so they lost government protections. They're anxious about, now there's a, a good yeah, quotation, foreign wolves come to China. So they, yeah, the wolves, so higher, yeah, the, the CEO of higher Zhang Renmin just called for that we have, the Chinese companies have to dance with the wolves. If you don't dance, you'll be eaten, you'll be killed. So that is, uh, yeah, that is, um, yeah, um, no, no, the, I think a lot of discussion was going on around this year, uh, 2001. <coughs> Now here, I just uh, show you uh, a few slides I developed for uh, for my course when I was at Penn. Uh, now here, uh, during that time, the Chinese investment environment actually this for foreign companies. Now China has a huge yeah, population, which means it's a huge consumption market. Also during that time, I think yeah, relatively yeah, the, the the global the micro environment is is relatively stable, and China also has well-established manufacturing basis due to the yeah, um, Mao Zedong's theory, so heavy industry, so a lot of yeah, very yeah, well-developed heavy industry base. And also China has, oh sorry, <laughs> yeah, large labor force. So uh, also labor costs we know, yeah, it's just one-tenth of American counterpart. Okay, now let's come to the advan comparative advantages of those foreign companies in China. Now here, they have good, yeah, they have well-known brand names compared to American Chinese companies. They have large capital, they have good te technology and international market share, and they have good management skills and the market skills. And they came to China and enjoyed enjoyed the favorable yeah, comparative advantage now that Chinese company used to enjoy that is labor yeah cheap labor cost and huge domestic market yeah of yeah <clears throat> 
Okay, so because of this, China, you know, China has become manufacturing, yeah, base. So a lot of labor, uh, labor-intensive products, uh, just made in China. Now here, and that is the uh, photo I sh I shot in yeah by Spy here. So it's a GE American brand, but yeah, uh, made in China. I think you can see a lot of lot of goods here in the yeah in, in, in here in, in in the department store. And this is Shenzhen port. A lot of lot of things that's just ready to go out to foreign comp to foreign dom the foreign comp uh, foreign markets. Now how about Chinese companies? Now let's still look at the comparative advantages. Now before they have cheap labor force. Yeah, cheap labor, uh, cheap labor. Now, but foreign companies can do that also. But I don't think they have a well internationally, internationally known brand. So they don't have capital now. But I mean, back to that time. And now it's since it's their friend. And they don't have good advantage. They don't know how to do market, especially on the international basis. The management, the human resources, all these far behind foreign companies. Also, so as, as I said yeah, just now, no, sh uh, no uh, business environment is not sheltered anymore about, yeah, uh, uh, by the government. And um, the, actually, the domestic market, just now as I said, China has become um, buyer's market. So the market, yeah, domestic market has become saturated already, yes? So it's difficult for Chinese companies to do, um, to do things. Yeah, in the, in, in the whole yeah, domestic market, they have to compete, uh, not only with the uh, Chinese companies, but also with international rivals. And also, at that time, I mean, yeah, during that time, a lot of international dumping lawsuits against the Chinese companies. That's, yeah, uh, I think it's still now, Chinese companies just export uh, a lot of things at the prices lower than now this is a lawsuit uh, lower than perhaps you yeah, here in the United States of course uh, also and these companies if they suffer from uh, the loss in, in selling their goods they might uh, refer to dumping uh, anti-dumping uh, terms uh, in uh, WTO, yeah, the, the, yeah w within WTO. So all these things, just comparative disadvantages Chinese companies have to go, yeah, have to deal with at that time. <coughs> so now here, and so the companies have now, so the best, especially the best one, uh, they have to go global to sustain their de econo economic development. Now, this is from company's perspective, also from the government perspective. Yeah, the government wish to establish, to set up a large number of China multinational companies in order to sustain the, 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 the development uh, as a whole. Now, before these companies, um, before these companies yeah, are going out, they have to answer these three questions. Now, number one, yeah, should a manufacturing base be built in China or overseas? Now, we have come to see several cases. Now, second one, should products distribution and sales be outsourced to foreign company, foreign market, marketing companies, or they do their own? Yes. Now, then another one is whether they should go with their own brands, the Chinese brands. Oh. Yeah, um, with the global brands, we know Chinese yeah, brands uh, is a little known outside China, actually. Now, let's look at yeah, three cases, a glance. Now, glance, I don't know whether you know. Now, I know several, yeah, several of you know about yeah, the name of the company. I don't know how about others. Now, here, uh, glance is slogan, oh, it's motto. It's just, we just want to become global manufacturer of human appliances. Now, look at, it's just want to do the manufacturer. But the home appliances of all best known and uh, best known brands um, yeah, on a global basis. Now look at now this company. Now this company actually was set up in 1978 when China just started uh, economic reform. So it's a, uh, it's a kind of private company, it's a family-based company, and it's a township village company. Now here, in 1993, it, become, yeah, it began to make microwaves. Now the CEO of the company just went to, went to Japan and 
uh, found out it's not difficult to produce something like microwaves. Then they started to produce microwaves. Now, now here, now they partner. They have partnership with more than 200 foreign companies, just as just as OEM manufacturer. I don't know whether you know the term OEM. Just use other brands to 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 to, to produce something uh, on their own. But here, 2000, now to the year 2000. Now about 70 percent microwaves across across international markets were made by yeah by this company perhaps you don't know but it's made in china but with many brands but 70 percent of market share belong yeah belong to this company and also 40 percent oh, oh no 70 percent just domestic market uh 40 percent international market but i just read yeah i i just went to their website uh, yesterday and the company said it's now about 50 percent of international market belongs to this company. I mean, just microwaves. So you know, yeah. Uh, now here, the, strat the operational strategies just maximize economies of scales. I don't know whether you know this term. Economies of scale just means just produce a large number in order to reduce the cost of poor unit. Yes, so this is economies. Now, just maximize this one and make the price as low as possible, both inside and outside the country. Now, let's look at the, now here. This is the, yeah, this is just several pictures about, um, about this company. Now here. Now, uh, still the Chinese. Uh, this is a slogan they just put forward. Yeah, if you know Chinese, you can try to read Chinese. This is their slogan. Now, it means, yeah, actually that is the slogan put forward in, back in 19, in, in, in mid 90s. It said, if, yeah, if Glass has no power to make their customers rich, they can, they can save their, yeah, save their money uh, as, as much as possible. That is their motto. Now here, uh, and in, back in 1996, each, yeah, the microwave, the average price is, is about 4,000 4, Chinese renminbi. But, but because of the operational strategies, now the price down to 300 renminbi by the year 2001. So that is what and this company accomplished just during this time. So we can see this is a very powerful company. <clears throat> now here, let's look at market share in three, in three uh, big cities in China. So 61 market share Beijing, 46 Shanghai, and 42 in Guangzhou. This is domestic market share. OK, however, yeah, however, after, yeah, and um, after, I think perhaps WTO after this time. Now, this company uh, has come across a bottleneck. Now, look at this one. So, domestic market saturated, cost increase. So, raw materials, electricity, everything. So, yeah, the cost increase uh, as well as perhaps labor. Yeah. Also, yeah, so the company in 2004, they had no way had, but had to raise price by just about yeah, 32 percent, just one year increase the price. So the profit profit margin is yeah, it just dropped just about yeah, uh, 0 0.5. Now look at these two. Uh, now this is a price in two yeah one yeah um, <clears throat> yeah 1998. Then um, okay, just two oh. Okay, forget this one. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just do some modif yeah, uh, some changes. Now look at the profit. Now 1990 is 3% profit margin, but 2004 just a point, uh, uh, just zero point, uh, uh, zero point five. Uh, uh, they, they can earn uh, as their, yeah, as their profit. Uh, so for these companies, ah. Uh, yeah, how to sustain in today's economic situation. And now, uh, so this is now, I, I just now I said, I just read the website. Now here, this is a family-based company and the new, under the new leadership, the second generation uh, yeah, of the original leader. So they just want to build up their own brands, but we don't know how they will go from today. Uh, also, before, now this is a private company. This company just said they don't want to go public. They don't want to be listed in the stock market. It's out of control. But now under the new leadership, they just 
plan to yeah, make their company go public, just perhaps collect some uh, capital from the uh, uh, stock market. Now, that is one case. Now, let's come to another case, higher. Yeah, uh, higher just, now Deer Motor is just built America, China's American company. It's just want to build American company instead of China's company. Now, look at this one. Now, it used to be a local collective factory. It's not um, the, the first, it's the first tier uh, state owned. But in 1984, uh, this company uh, renamed itself as Higher Group. Now, the the main, yeah, the main line of the production is just refrigerator. Now here, look at here. In 2000, 2007, now that is here and the updated information. So about 30 design centers, about 50,000 employees throughout the world, and this is the, their turnover. But now, it's the fourth largest white goods manufacturer, you know, lies with the refrigerator microwaves, and one of the top 100 IT companies. And now here, this is one thing they are very proud. They not hire is the most valuable Chinese brand. Uh, according to New York Times in 2008. It's just published. <clears throat> okay, now let's come to, yeah, come to the fact that they came to the United States to build up factory. Now, th now here, they have plant in Southern California. Um, but now the disadvantage they had, yeah, they have deal with is that your refrigerators as well as microwaves is just same profit margin. Yes, very, profit margin is very thin. It's labor cost, and also U.S. Yeah, U.S. market is uh, is is uh, saturated. It's competitive. It's a well developed. It's a mature market. Also, Chinese uh, cons uh, American consumers when they buy something like this, they just yeah they, they value very much about the brand names rather than the price alone. And so higher is very little now. Also here in this market, this market is a brand sensitive market, especially when you buy something like you know, refrigerators. Yeah. Also, now high labor cost is 10 times <laughs> and 10 times here. Now here, uh, and, but now let's come to see how this company operated here. They just wanted to build an international brand name. They just want to make higher as uh, international brand rather than just China's brand. Now, want to become an comp American company. Now here, uh, now the CEO of Hire came to Penn, yeah, uh, I think 2004. I went to his talk, and he said, I just uh, spent $300,000 uh, uh, to, uh, to, to hire an American manager. It's pretty high. Actually, it's back to 2000, 2004. And they also hire American workers. And now, what he said is they are doing this in order to sustain the de development of the whole company and reduce dumping low suit. Now, I don't know whether you, you, whether you know much, you know a lot about dumping and anti-dumping things. And yeah, we, now in, 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 here in this market, they can acquire new technology technology much faster than, yeah, than yeah, if they are still in, in China. Now here, uh, now look at some uh, photos. Now this is uh, China American headquarters. It's in, New, it's in New York, New Manhattan, New York. They spent this money to buy this in back to 19, I think 1999, yes? So I think uh, in terms of real estate value, it's, yeah, it's appreciated. Now, and it is spent $40 million to build a higher factory in Southern California. <coughs> Now here, look at now, now the, the info update uh, yeah, reported from the website. Now Hire had entered into 10 retailer chains in America, including Sears, Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, Target, Best Buy, those things. But, but I don't know, yeah, I, yeah, perhaps we can do a survey whether you still, you know about this name, you know the name, you know the Hire as, as a brand. Uh, how, how many people know this, yeah, Hire? Okay, 
So okay, okay, you lost of course now. Uh, those people who raise their hand, they just in my in my Chinese class, they learn about this in my class. But for other people, if you didn't come to my class, I mean Chinese class, you don't know about this name. So we can see how success how successful this company has operated here. Now its name is still quite little now. Okay, now here. According to the higher CEO's explanation, uh, now they operated in America. Their now their priority is to name rather than profits. But here, name is not known. Profits, of course, is not very good. And now here, now this is my conclusion about this company: high cost, high cost. Not only in terms of money, but in terms of time. It's time or it's ten years already. But this company is still well, still quite now known in this yeah in this market. So high cost, high risk, and long pass. We don't know how long, how far they will go to to, to achieve their yeah to achieve their uh, their goals. Now here, uh, now this is the. Now this is a picture I shot. I think uh, a couple of years ago uh, in Best Buy in, in New Jersey Best Buy. I just went there, try to find yeah, try to find how, yeah whether they they carry yeah. Um, Higher products, but I went to yeah I went I, I went yeah I looked it up and it's, yeah there is higher there uh, along with other yeah international known brands Sony Whirlpool yeah it's there but when I went to the when I went to the shelves and tried to find yeah a higher product sorry I only found this one not on the shelf but in the corner of the Best Buy so but here but if you go to their website, if your yeah, Best Buy website, Walmart website, you can yeah you can see their products sold yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, on the internet. Uh, so here, uh, this is the yeah, this is the yeah, conclusion I made. Still yeah, recognize this brand was very little now yes, and uh, also they they manufacture basically low end products, but not here yeah not here here. But when I yeah that I attend I, at other uh, um, college uh, dorms, a lot of people buy higher um, refrigerator, small and cheap. Yes, but just for a dorms use, not not for pipes, not for homes. <coughs> now here. Higher try to change its operational strategies rather than just uh, manufacturing here. Now, 2005, Higher tried to um, acquire U.S. based Maytag Corporation. And, however, Whirlpool went the bait. Uh, paying this one now. This is uh, uh, this is the bidding price. These three companies will pull higher uh, Ripper Woods. And according to uh, um, a professor from, uh, sorry about Pan. So I, I know them so well. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, according to Professor Profan uh, from Pan, one obstacle for higher's failure is that they is they reluctant to fork these clothes. The, uh, the operational things, accounts, you know, those things. And so peop now people here don't know whether yeah, this company belongs to the Chinese government or belongs to who. Yes, so the ownership is not clear. So that is, uh, that is the problem for Chinese companies going abroad, especially when they want to do, want to merge these acquisition deals. Okay. Now this is the stock performance. I just found out, I think two days ago. Now higher went to public in 2006 in Hong Kong, but also in addition to, to China, Shanghai. Uh, now here, look at the performance. The stock performance is, I don't think it's good, but, but consider the, the, the whole, the entire yeah, market yeah, situation. We don't know. But still, but very not, not very good. I think that each year is less than one Hong Kong dollars. Yes. So. 
Okay, now here, I, I also went to a higher America website. Now let's look at, let's read how the website describes this company. It's, it just, uh, I just abbreviate something. Uh, Hair America, now you try to find out uh, whether you can find something that is China's, Mer China's company. But you just found, oh, this is an American company. Let's look at it. Hair America, founded in 1999 by CEOs. It's an American name, it's not Chinese name. So Michael Jamel, headquarters in the Hair America building, so New York. Yes, so. Uh, also, now okay. Here, look at here. Ah, uh, um, look at here. Now here, South Carolina produces American-made instead of China-made. Yeah, American-made refrigerator. Uh, refrigeration products for U.S. consumers. So this is what the China, that this company wants to do. So it's an American company, international brands, but whether it's successful or not, I don't, yeah, we don't know. So, so it, it helps that Hire will become a household name in America. So long way to go. <laughs> Now let's come to Lenovo. I think, I don't know whether you, you, perhaps you know this name. This is the, yeah, of course you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, actually, Lenovo. Now, before I mean, now the, the name of the company is Legend. It yeah, changed its name to Lenovo. I think in 2002. And before 2004, this name is little known outside China. It's, but it's 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 a good name. It's a best known name. Uh, in, in the domestic market. But this name became a yeah, headline name around the world in, in 2004. Why? It's just quite IBM PC unit yeah, with this kind of money. Yes, it's a such large sum of money. So it's the, the, the largest mergers acquisitions uh, that Chinese companies have never made before this one. Uh, actually, around this time, Chi a lot of Chinese companies just did mergers acquisitions, but not as significant as this one. Uh, also, uh, IBM is such a best known, it's such a large, it's a name, yes? Uh, also, now you can see uh, these companies just do some acquisition, mergers acquisition, but not in America, but in other countries, but, uh, just in perhaps less known markets. But this one is in, in America and acquired IBM. Actually, IBM is a name, it's another name, it's a synonym of computers before, yeah, before its acquisition. Now here, now look at and um, yeah um, the, uh, the the yeah the this, the performance uh, before the deal. Now here. Now this is IBM. Yeah, IBM at that time is number three, and Lenovo is number nine. Yes. Now this is the rank before the deal. Now here, look at the IBM. Perhaps you're wondering why IBM, why IBM uh, wanted to sell its PC sector uh, to a Chinese company. Now look at here. Uh, and actually, in a PC, yeah, PC uh, unit is yeah, it occupies very small revenue share. It's about six percent. Yeah, it's about six six percent at that time. Uh, cut uh, out of yeah, the total uh, revenues. Uh, also, yeah, from 1999 to 2004, uh, the market, the computer market, uh, went down for this company. Uh, okay. Now, after the deal, now Lenovo MBM becomes number three. Yes, and now uh, this is uh, revenue. Uh, um, now this is the new revenue after the deal. Okay. Let's come to some terms. Yes, PC, yeah, with this deal, Lenovo took over IBM PC business, including manufacturing and uh, research and development. Yes, the, the two things. Um, but IBM continued to have voice in the PC business, and uh, Lenovo moved its headquarters to New York. And, and later to North Carolina. So here, headquarters is uh, here in the United States. But of course, another headquarter in, yeah, in, in China. Now here, uh, and according to his, Lenovo, uh, his president, 
and the take, this takeover speed up the company's global expansion by 10 to 12, uh, 20 years. Now, I think uh, with this uh, deal, uh, Hire wanted to do something similar. That is why it yeah, wanted to um, acquire Maytag in 2005, yes. <clears throat> now, OK, but um, Hire failed uh, in his uh, acquisition deal. But uh, Lenovo succeed. Now, uh, one reason uh, is that, and largely because in the U.S. partners, two private equity investors participate, get in, got involved in the deal. So I think perhaps IBM, be, yeah, just has confi have confidence in American investors rather than Chinese investors alone. So this. Um, yeah, this might be an uh, important factor for the success of this um, deal. Now here, uh, um, people are still wondering who owns yeah, Lenovo. Yes, now look at now this one. Now here, in Chinese government, 33%. Of course, this is a holding. Uh, and now this is the you know, Hong Kong uh, stockholders. 28. Uh, IBM, 13%. Which is, uh, no, the, 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 the percentage should be changed uh, now, I mean. Private investors, so two US private equity firms, uh, just 10%. And still, yeah, employees of Lenovo has 10%, yeah, have 10 of the shares of the company. Now look at uh, organization chart. Uh, and uh, this is, um, the chair of the board is still Yang Yuanqing, is Chinese. And CEO is, Ameri is American from the uh, original IBM PC yeah, department, is senior vice president. And now here, look at here, now um, but three, six uh, Chinese, six Americans. Yes, but however, now this, now this position, I think uh, after half a year, another person yeah, replaced him. Now, uh, according to Lenovo, now this, now this, now Stephen Ward is is good in in technology, but uh, the new the new CEO is just good for marketing. Now, the company needs a person who is who is better in marketing rather than perhaps technology. Now, that is their yeah their explanation for the change in person. Now here, uh, and now look at uh, the update. Uh, still, yeah, the best-selling computer in China, 37 market share. Now, Olympic uh, sponsor, 2008. But here, this is one. This is a good thing. Uh, uh, Fortune 500. Now, Lenovo is 4.99. Yes, it's uh, yeah. So yeah, you love. It's, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. Um, now, okay. Now look at the new market share, international PC market share. Uh, Lenovo becomes yeah, number four rather than number three because the, this Taiwan, uh, Taiwan computer maker acquired Gateway, then jump to number three. Yes. Okay. Stock performance, not good. Not good. Yes. So. <coughs> Now this is in yeah in Hong Kong yeah stock exchange. Okay, uh, let's come to uh, the update. Uh, um, so third quarter financial report not just now, uh, shipment declines five percent, a seven percent decline in China's PC market. Now I think yeah this perhaps not 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 fault of the company. It's because of the global. Yeah, a global uh, global situation. Now fourth quarter loss again, so decreased by forty eight percent. So plus, yeah. So what did you do? Now okay. Oh sorry. Yeah, this should be yeah, with the other one. Now this stock still stock performance in Hong Kong compared to the uh, basic market trend. So uh, Lenovo is did, uh, does not perform as well as the general. Yeah, general uh, trend. <coughs> now here, now in 2006 and 2007 they cut jobs, and recently they cut uh, uh, another another cut 
2,500, so 11% of global force. Now here, uh, let's come to its personnel exchange. So Liu Chuanzhi, the original founder of the group, came back to become a company chairman. Yes, so here. And Yang Yuanqing, the original CEO, yeah, replaced that American CEO and become, yeah, become CEO again. Now, actually, Yang Yuanqing, when the deal took place, is just uh, the chair, chair of the board. Now, it become, yeah, it returned to the, to the office as a CEO to replace American one. So the situation to this company is really, really serious, yes. Um, okay, as a conclusion, not, not conclusion, a uh, conclusion from the perspective of the companies. And Chinese companies actually um, uh, just uh, utilize six, these strategies to so establish overseas production bases as higher. Yes, uh, make global mergers acquisition. I think this is the latest trend for the Chinese companies to go, bro uh, go global. And building up global brand names, so building. So that is what higher is doing. Uh, um, uh, building uh, global brands are also uh, just use uh, uh, international brands, ready international brands, just as what Lenovo did with IBM. Yes, but the, the question is, what kind of brands Chinese companies should, 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 should yeah, are willing to use? Now, TCL, another, um, another um, yeah, home appliance giant in China, just acquired uh, secondary brands, but failed totally, yes, in, in, in Europe. And now, this is another one, uh, overseas capital from stock market and employed the, yeah, international um, people. Now this is six uh, operation. Now let's come now here. Uh, uh, I just add these things on because yeah, in the situation like this, uh, people are just curious how China should do um, with yeah with the with the capital they have yeah uh, in hand. <laughs> okay. So here, uh, from the con uh, government uh, or national perspective, global, uh, going global is a national uh, policy. Labor costs are rising in China. So people just predict uh, it, will be, uh, it, be, it will be rising by 30 to 50%. And so a lot of uh, international companies just uh, withdraw from China's market and establish manufacturer yeah, basis in yeah, cheaper markets such as Vietnam, Malaysia, those things. And, but still, but so, uh, so Chinese companies now invested this kind of money uh, last year, I mean the first two quarters in 2000 and 2008, including yeah, 25, 66 uh, billion in non-financial situations. Yeah, perhaps if you, uh, you know, if you, um, yeah, if you uh, care about uh, Chinese situa um, uh, economic situation, you might know that uh, Chinese uh, financial institutions um, buy a lot of stocks of American uh, or international financial situations. So Blackstone, Barclay, oh, they spend a lot of money to buy financial yeah, shares. But now here, uh, now compared to 2007, it's 229 percent increase. So it's a large jump. Um, so now here, uh, China still compared to, yeah, I know the, uh, the situation, the economic situation is bad uh, throughout the whole uh, market, but China comparatively is still, yeah, relatively strong. So uh, GDP now is number three, and number two foreign trade after Germany, and it's high, yes, high saving rate, and largest foreign yeah, reserve uh, uh, across uh, compared to all the countries. And the important thing is the government support to those companies who are willing to, yeah, going up, yeah, willing to go global. 
Now, so now the, the purpose for the Chinese government is just uh, expand more market shares in emerging markets and developed economies. Now, they want to acquire raw materials and energy resources to sustain the development of the whole entire economy. And now, OK. Now here, uh, um, uh, in, the situa in a situation like this, uh, actually it's, it's a good opportunity for the Chinese companies to buy, uh, to buy shares in, in, in the global market because assets, now the, the global properties become cheap. Yes, now the foreign companies, Western companies just need money to stimulate, they just need cash. And according to the, yeah, the Chinese companies, uh, also the government has the money, has the cash. Yeah, so how to allocate the cash, whether to buy American bonds or just use the money to buy, yeah, yeah, the shares of Western companies. And also with this, uh, political barriers so may be lifted yeah, on the Western, yeah, on the Western yeah, market. We don't know, just, just prediction. And now here, uh, just now I said, uh, Chinese companies bought a lot of shares, uh, international, uh, just financial shares. Now this is the last reported a uh, few days ago. So P&I insurance lost yeah, 2.3 billion. So this one, 1.7, yeah, big loss. So China itself suffered a lot uh, in the economic financial crisis. And so the government tries to stop a little bit, especially in terms of financial investment. And now, okay, this is, the, this is the news a couple of days ago. Uh, the Ministry of Commerce recently announced it just asked Chinese company to apply for approval if investing $100 million or more overseas. So just, we just predict yeah, Chinese, yeah, the pace of global, going global may slow down this year. But I don't know, perhaps next year we'll pick up again. And now here, let's call it what, yeah, what this person said. So cash is king in this situation. Uh, China has a lot of cash, and the whole world is for sale at a discount. Yes. Now here, China, now here, according to this person, China should wait a few more months and then go on a shopping spring to secure what is needs at a secure, secure discount. So, so this is just quotation from. Uh, expert. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, what time is it? I think it's is it too okay, long? Uh, we have uh, time for a few questions. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. so you're talking about like a lot of the um, cheap labor is kind of moving out of uh, China you know, and it's increasing at thirty to fifty percent the cost of the labor there. Uh -huh. So where is it all going now? Like Vietnam. Uh, and how fast is that moving? You know, how, how soon are we going to see like an Eastern China that's not really kind of labor? Uh huh. I don't know how fast they will move to other, but it's a trend. Yeah, it's a trend to go into a, a cheaper labor market. Yes. Now, is this this uh, loss of the labor market is that leading to people like leaving the cities and trying to find different jobs, or is there, are people staying in the cities and being unemployed? Is there like a labor shift there? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Migration. You mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, in today's market, there are a lot of manufacturers and just cut their, perhaps, yeah, their production quotas. And in this kind of situation, yeah, those. You, you, did you mean that? So, the micro. Well, I mean, so, like American. The, uh, mm, is, there, is there a lot of people like who are, they've come to the cities from like the, uh, the agricultural side trying to get jobs now? Mm -hmm. As these jobs are leaving, are they like trying to return back? Or are they staying in the cities? Because that cause. No, I think it depends on the, yeah, the trend of the global market. If the yeah, if the economy comes back, then yeah, of course there's a large yeah, better yeah, better better production. Then labor may be needed. Then come back. Yeah. Well, you say that uh, obviously the Chinese not performing as well in American markets. What about like European markets or maybe some other global? Um, um, I I don't know, but I just now I said yeah, TCL um, bought some European brands. Yeah, and just the brands carried by Radio Shark before, but it's, it's, it's yeah, it's down, it's totally lost. Yeah. 
I, I, I don't know about European market, but I don't think, yeah, I don't think it, it should be better than higher here in the United States. Does China want to maintain their kind of status as cheap labor, or do they want to move on from that? Because if that's the case, they just kind of need to lower the currency a little bit. And they I don't think, it, yeah, the, the government can control it about this. Of course, they just wanted to sustain their development, both cheap labor as well as going global. I don't think the government can do a lot of things well, about the, this. As the government develops and people have higher standards and need for money, mm -hmm. of course the jobs are going to go to places that doesn't mm -hmm. require so much money for, you know, they just don't have standard, lower, they have lower standards down south. So mm -hmm. um, I think the currency has a huge impact on that, how the China government controls their currency. Mm -hmm. So foreign markets, when they try to you know, uh, pay their workers their, mm -hmm. the, the, with the high you know price of the Chinese yuan, and mm -hmm. that's what the Chinese workers want to get paid in. Yeah. So if the currency um, is going down, so you mean depreciation or appreciation? Well, the, the value of the Chinese currency is very expensive, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of what's making it expensive for the foreign markets to afford Chinese labor. Mm -hmm. So, but, the, but it's the government that decides how much the currency is going to be. So, so it's, that's going to lead to jobs leaving the country. Yeah, I, I, I actually, sorry, I cannot answer this, such a kind of macro, yeah, question. Yes, sorry, yeah. So, but, but not here, I, with our yeah, class, we found somebody who are doing, not here, back to our class. Uh, yeah, we found somebody who are doing yeah, currency report. Let's see, yeah, how, yeah, how the trend will be. Yes. It, it seems to me that question actually uh, uh, is very essential. Uh, if you look at the fundamental difference between capitalism mm -hmm. and social, uh, and, and this socialism is a really issue of ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, Really, is ownership. Mm -hmm. China uh, has openly professed that they're carrying out a, 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 a strategy of socialist market economy. Yes, which right. Mm -hmm. Which means the government owns most of the companies mm -hmm. and they are running those companies as a, in a free market internationally, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. gives them, of course, tremendous advantages. For example, yeah, one of huh? the is the currency. Mm -hmm. Chinese currency, as you know, is not mm -hmm. really convertible internationally. Mm -hmm. So it's a policy decided by the public bureau. Mm -hmm. And then they can decide that currency mm -hmm. to their own uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. So that seems to me is a, is a, is a, is a, there is kind of a disconnect between the, how the Chinese operate mm -hmm. and, and the overseas. And, and I think that's a, that's a, that seems to be the problem um, that a lot of people uh, a, complaint. a lot of people tend to forget. Mm -hmm. You cannot really forget that mm -hmm. in fact. Uh, so we have to deal with that. Yeah. I wonder if you think the current economic uh, downturn will force us to readjust the many of the policies, financial policies, in New York City, in Washington, D.C., a lot mm -hmm. of places. One of the challenges, I think, is to deal with the entity like China, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of policies related to that, mm -hmm. currency and also mm -hmm. trade, also mm -hmm. WTO uh, uh, mm -hmm. compliance, mm -hmm. many of the issues. Mm -hmm. Do you think, is there such demand with the new administration in Washington, D.C., for China to uh, to get involved in some of the policy changes? I, I, I actually, I, I don't think so. The, now, the, I think Wen Jiabao is very proud that they have two strong hands. One is, one is, yeah, uh, one is a hand that they can, they can control. Another is, is a market economy. So I, I, I think in this kind of situation, the, the government wants to yeah, strengthen this, this hand rather than, yeah, rather than weaken. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. I just, I, 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 I suspect you're right. Sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want, yeah, they just want to strengthen this one. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Okay, yeah, okay. So <laughs> we have time for one more question. One more question. Yeah, what time is it? Here. Are Chinese companies going towards a more service oriented uh mm -hmm. operations device uh, product oriented services? Because I know like India they do a lot of services. Mm -hmm. sort of that yes. Is China going towards that mm -hmm. sort of, uh, business? I think that's another national policy. Yes, they just want to develop yeah a, a service industry. Yeah, rather than focus more uh, focus only on manufacturers. This is another one. The Chinese service industry is not well developed. But but this is one thing. Uh, I don't think Chinese consumers and. Um, 
you have, you believe more in, in services. This is, you, you just open your mouth, uh, give some advice, then you charge a lot of money. So it's, I think, yeah, so it's a, a kind of education, it's a, a kind of yeah, market education. But do, yeah, that is another national policy. Yeah. I think also there's some kind of, a, you heard the word orientalism, right? In China, mm -hmm. consumer has the occidentalism. They have this a lot of a belief in brand that's not Chinese. No matter how lousy maybe the foreign product might be, but they think it's not Chinese. It's, a, it's a from overseas, it's a young. And they have that kind of a psychology. I think it's gradually changing now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think <clears throat> right now, Professor Yuan has, uh, has done four remarkable things here. Uh, you're all awake. The four reasons why you may not be awake. One is your schedule, get up too early. Secondly, what you eat, zerverters, right? So, or something to do, the topic with the economics. All PowerPoints. <laughs> Talk about economics, two more PowerPoints, you have the same schedule, you have the same kind of the lousy food. But you're all awake. I think it testified to the fact this is a fascinating presentation. And uh, it didn't bore anybody, as a matter of fact, we also learn a lot about uh, about the Chinese companies from different perspective. And I think this, uh, this presentation is going to be, uh, uh, I learn a lot about this. Uh, when I try to talk about economics and use a PowerPoint, my student just uh, shows me the whole mass. So, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you.